And that's Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, today, Vigna Aquitania. Um, actually, it doesn't say Vigna Aquitania, it just says Aquitania. It used to be Vigna Aquitania. But anyway, uh, their Reserva Cabernet Sauvignon 2012 from Maipo in Chile. Um, this is Aquitania is the estate that's, um, uh, that was established in, was it the early 90s or maybe even the late 80s? Uh, Bruno Prats, from, who was at the time at Costa Estonel, uh, Paul Pontalier, Paul Pontalier uh, from... Um, um, uh, Chateau Margo and a Chilean uh, guy called uh, Philippe de uh, Solmignac uh, and they've been joined since then by uh, the eminent Champenois Ghislaine de Montgolfier and um, and they now yes it used to be they, they just did uh, some reds out of Maipo uh, and then they moved into uh, they, they, they've got a, a Chardonnay that they do down in a place called Mayeco and they've got a Pinot Noir from there which I'll be trying on a video soon um, but anyway let's try this one first now, one of the things that you could probably say about the early vintages of, uh, of Paul Bruno uh, and indeed other Bordeaux-influenced uh, wines that were being made in Chile is that uh, the, these Bordelais people went there and they tried to make Bordeaux. Uh, but uh, since then, they've worked out that it's, it's, uh, it's not the same climate. It's not the same terroir. It may even be that, well, the, the clones aren't the same that they're, they're, they're growing in Bordeaux. Um, and so they've adapted. What I think is, uh, smells good about here is um, it's, it's, it smells like it's Chile. So there is this um, uh, quite intense black currant character. Uh, there's a licorice edge in there. It feels like they, they, a licorice for me. It says quite high alcohol. Not too, well, 14%. It's it's on the high-ish side, but it's not uh, it's not uh, way way high. Um, but also what what I like about it in Chilean context, I find uh, in in a lot of Chilean uh, wines reduction is a problem. It feels like the, the the people who've been making it are just a little bit too safety conscious. Here it smells like. like there's good élevage, so they've used nice oak uh, and they've used it well and they've used it to round out the fruit flavours uh, but they've not been so hands-on that it's like hands-on for uh, if you're if you're a youngster in the kitchen and you get your mum slapping your hand going get your hands off there Simon she doesn't speak like that my mother uh, but uh, yes it feels like it's been well brought up let's try it yeah, that, that uh, piercing Chilean blackcurrant flavour, uh, tinged with Mediterranean, things like bay. Uh, and there's an earthy graphite-like character that's, uh, that's um, uh, adding interest. Feels like a wine that uh, is... Um, when I say work in progress, I mean it feels like it's it, it's tasty now, but it feels like that some of its more exotic, uh, those herby characters, uh, need more more time to to emerge. At the moment, what you're getting is um, it, it doesn't feel like there's an oaky wine at all. It, it feels like it's come out of the barrel and is ready to sort of ready to play. But I think it's going to play um, even more beautifully um, in about two or three years' time. Uh, the fruit is still has a little bit of tightness about it, but not that reduced tightness where you want to sort of slap it round and take the creases out of its genes. That's the problem with a lot of chilli for me. Um, but here it feels it feels good. And um, I, I do like that. I do like that. See you soon.